Am I the a-hole for Venmo requesting my sister-in-law for the hours I had to miss at work? My 35 female husband passed away a few years ago in an accident, so now it's just me and my 7-year-old son. My husband was the main breadwinner, so it has been rough, so now I work until 8 and gets out of school at 3. My sister-in-law doesn't work as her husband owns a very successful business, and she helps out. Sister-in-law picks my son up from school and brings him to her house to hang out slash do homework until I can pick him up. But on Wednesday, she called me while I was already at work to tell me her and her husband got last-minute concert tickets so she wouldn't be able to pick him up from school. I was angry. It would be one thing if I knew in advance and could make other arrangements, but she just sprung it on me. I asked her to reconsider, reminded her that she made this commitment, and it would be really awful to break it. But she still wanted a concert, and I have to leave work six hours early and lost out on all those hours. I figured since she put me in this spot, she should have to recoup me as my income is the only thing me and my son survive on. So, I sent her a Venmo request for the amount I lost out on, and I got a nasty text from her a few minutes later about how she is not paying it. I had to send my son home with one of his friends yesterday and today because she won't pick him up anymore. I told some of my friends and they are 50-50 on if I should have done it. But I need that income and she made a commitment to meet my son. I think that is more important than going to a concert to get drunk. Now for the top comments. This is amazingly stupid. Your sister-in-law is babysitting for free and you want to charge her money when she cannot babysit for free? You're the a-hole. Your sister-in-law is not your personal slave. Your kid is your problem. But you sure seem to have dumped so many parental responsibility on your sister-in-law that you somehow thinks now that she is a parent and she owes you money to take care for your own kid? That's not how it works. She helps out. Sister-in-law picks my son up from school and brings him to her house to hang out slash do homework until I can pick him up. Agreed. While the sister-in-law's ditching last minute was crappy, OP is an ungrateful fool. Now she needs to find money for the formerly free childcare and transportation that she took for granted and felt entitled to. Assuming this is a five days a week, sister-in-law is volunteering 30 hours a week of her time to childcare, and Opie's referring to it as helping out. Sure, it sucks that she cancelled last minute, but Opie shot herself in the foot here, because now she's going to need to pay someone for those 30 hours of childcare. You're the a-hole. You need to take responsibility for your own child. You should have found another sitter. You can't expect your sister-in-law to always be there to help you out. I have been an aunt for more than half my life, and I feel lucky that my siblings always made their kids available to me to love and train and support. It's been a huge part of my life. But demand I give up my life because they have kids was never their inclination, let alone their right to assume. I hope he doesn't seem to understand that her needs and her sister-in-law's priorities will sometimes differ. It comes across as super entitled. I mean, you're giving a fine to someone for not giving free labor? I wonder if the sister has sprung it on her last minute. Because when she tries to plan things, she gets the bleeding heart stories from Opie to guilt her into babysitting when she doesn't want to. It sucks to live in a world where many parents do rely on family help because wages are almost cancelled out by childcare if you have a minimum wage or a similar job. I don't know that that's the case here, I'm just assuming. But even if she is struggling, which I really do empathize with, that's a societal issue, not a sister issue, and her sister is already doing too much. Next story. Am I the a-hole for treating my stepson like an adult? So, I, 25 female, have a stepson Riley, 8 male. My husband Harry, 29 male, has full custody and his job has sent him away for a whole month. So, I'm taking care of Riley. Now, I will admit I don't know much about children. I'm the youngest person on both sides of my family and growing up, I spent most of my time in hospital or getting bullied by my cousins. So, I generally have no clue about what kids get up to. Obviously, I know the basics like homework, playdates, etc. But I never really paid much attention to what Riley did every single day when he had nothing scheduled because my husband took care of them. I asked my husband about how I was supposed to entertain Riley and he said that I should just let him do his own thing until he says he's bored. But that didn't feel right to me. Like I should bring him home from school and just let him sit in his room with his iPad? That does not sound healthy. 
So I decided that I should teach him things like baking, card games, board games, etc. And so far, he's learned how to make cupcakes with minimal support, and he's learned how to play chess, checkers, and five card games. I've also taught him things like how to lay a table and table etiquette, a few silly little magic tricks, and how to do a really crappy British accent to annoy my British father. I made sure he stayed on top of his homework and social obligations too. Then he spent last weekend with my in-laws, and when I pick him up, mother-in-law was very annoyed at me. Apparently, he kept asking her to let him bake all weekend, and he refused to do anything besides card games with father-in-law all weekend too. She said that I wasn't letting him be a child and entertain himself because I felt inadequate as a step-parent, which I guess is true. Then she complained to my husband, and she's been pestering him to let Riley stay with them until he's back. He's also annoyed at me because he told me to let Riley get up to his own thing, and instead I overthought it, and they said I was treating him like an adult and was stealing his childhood. My parents also said that it was weird of me to be so worried about Riley keeping himself busy, and this all could have been avoided if I chilled out. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It's deeply concerning to me that your in-laws see avoidance and neglect as a better parenting style than being engaging and actually teaching him things. No kidding. The kid's not a plant you need to just water occasionally. Sounds like you were being a great stepmom. Not the a-hole. Sounds like she made some everlasting core memories with this child. He'll be so excited to bake with his stepmom all the time. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Are they seriously mad that you engaged with a child, taught him life skills in a way that he enjoyed so much he asked to do it again, and enjoyed playing card games? They are angry you're so much better than they are. It's not good for kids to spend all their time on screens. Interactive playing games and baking are great activities for a kid and are in no way forcing adult responsibility on a kid. You and kiddo are the only two who aren't a-holes. Not gonna lie, the only parents I ever met who disliked engaging with their kids like this were drunks, tweakers, or dating those types and taking out all their relationship frustrations on the kids for being in the way. Not claiming the family's like this, but it really isn't a healthy way to go. And you kids on the other end of the spectrum, parents too busy with their high-earning jobs to pay any attention. One girl in high school told me that her parents had never once sat down and played with her, her entire childhood. She didn't know it was a thing parents did. They were practically strangers to her. Not day whole. Your husband left you to parent his child solo for a month? And he's the one who has full custody? It sounds like you have risen to the occasion and are doing just fine. If I could make any suggestions, maybe take Riley to the library and have him pick out an armload of books, or however many the library allows, in order to keep himself busy. And for those times no one is available to play card games or supervise baking. Your mother-in-law sounds jealous that Riley is obviously enjoying his time with you. Don't worry about her opinions. Next story. Am I the a-hole for saying my in-laws have no right to judge me for not adopting my stepchildren because they have no idea what it's like to be a step-parent? I, 35 female, have been married to my husband Michael, 38 male, for 5 years now. I am the stepmother of his two boys from his first marriage, Lee, 14 male, and Kai, 8 male. Their mother passed away 7 years ago. Kai calls me mom, and has since he was 4, while Lee calls me by my first name. Kai has wanted me to adopt him for some time now and it was something discussed. And the reason it has not happened is Lee does not want me to adopt him. And my husband did not feel comfortable with me adopting only Kai. He's worried about it coming between the boys. About Lee maybe feeling left out eventually. But I think the main reason is he worries about the judgment of others. And the fact the comments could get to both of the boys. I love both Lee and Kai. But my relationship with each of them is different. Kai is my son. And we have a mother-son relationship. Lee is my stepson, who I love, but he doesn't always like that I'm here. Sometimes he gets annoyed that I'm here instead of his mom. Sometimes he treats me okay, but he has never been okay with me filling too much of his mom's role in his life. So our relationship is a delicate balancing act. The boys have been in therapy. We also did therapy together as a family. My husband asked the therapist for their opinion on the adoption, and she said we made the right decision that when the boys get older, like once the boys are around 10 and 16 respectively, and their feelings have not changed, then adopting just Kai could be okay. But to make sure, Lee is spoken to again and given the option to express if it changed his mind. 
This has been challenging because so many people have opinions. I hate seeing Kai sad, but I don't want to force anything on Lee either. Or risk him feeling a certain way if we make the wrong decision. My in-laws mentioned I should adopt the boys about a month into the marriage. At the time, my husband told them we didn't need to rush anything. But now they are aware of what is going on. And they told me it's shameful that I have not adopted the boys and become their legal mother. They said Lee is depriving both himself and his brother the legal protection of being their mother. And that I am showing clear favoritism by making it obvious that I want to adopt Kai but not Lee. I asked them how I make that obvious and they ignored my question. They just told me I should have jumped at a chance to be their mother. That it was monstrous to consider making one of them mine and discarding the other like yesterday's garbage. That angered me because I have always done my best. So I ended up saying that they had no right to judge me for not adopting the boys because they have no idea what it's like to be a step-parent and especially to stepchildren who have lost their biological parent to death. And they have no idea what it's like when both kids want different relationships with you. They just told me you don't have to be a step-parent to know someone is wrong in how they step-parent. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole, and well done as a step-parent. You came into the boys' lives at very different points in time, and you're respecting their individual wishes. It would be worse for you to adopt Lee when that isn't what he wants. And to be honest, it can be an option that is always on the table, even when he becomes a legal adult. Added to that, the opinion of your in-laws means nothing, and you should cease to trouble yourself about them. Your husband needs to intervene and tell your in-laws to stop bugging you. They are way out of line. The only people with opinions that matter here are you, your husband, and the two boys. The therapist seems sensible. Listen to the professional and ignore your in-laws. They're full of it. You're trying to do the right thing for everyone, so not the a-hole. Reddit is full of stories about step-parents adopting kids when the kids weren't ready for it or outright didn't want to be adopted. Forcing a relationship in these situations never works. These kids will appreciate you actually considering what is best for them and asking them what they want. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. But do speak with an attorney about living wills and advance directives. If anything were to happen to your stepkids, at least there is documentation in place for you to make medical decisions on their behalf. If not, your in-laws can make a bad situation worse. I would also see about some kind of legal guardianship for now, meaning that you can do medical appointments, etc., as well as some kind of security about shared custody in event of a split, especially the youngest. Need to discuss the legal guardianship with oldest, so he understands that is not adoption, but provides another adult to be legally responsible, so you can sign school paperwork, doctor stuff, vacation stuff, etc., and provides a safety net should anything happen to the dead. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for taking my brother-in-law to small claims court over art supplies? A bit of context. I-29 male like to draw and try other mediums as well. As such, I've accumulated a lot of art supplies over the past few years. My wife, Sally, 27 female, also dabbles a bit. And we have converted one of the rooms in our home to an art studio of sorts. There's easily a few thousand dollars worth of art supplies in that room, and we tend to keep it locked for that reason. Most important to me are my pencils and markers, which were not cheap. Chart pack for those who care. Now on to the story. Sally and I had her family over for her aunt's birthday a few weeks back, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law brought their kids with them, seven female and six male. We had forgotten to lock the door to the room that day. About an hour into the party, I noticed that both kids were nowhere to be seen, so I asked my sister-in-law if they knew where they were. She said that they were drawing in the other room. I asked if my wife was with them, and she said she just told them which room it was in. I immediately rushed over to the art room and found it was a total mess. Most devastatingly was the fact that all my markers were ruined because the kids were using way too much force, causing the tips to fray. I yelled at them to get out, and they started crying. My brother-in-law ran over and started yelling at me saying they're just kids, and it's just markers. I told him that the markers alone were $17 a piece, and he said I was stupid for paying that much. Sally tried to defuse the situation, but my brother-in-law started yelling at her too saying we can't have this much art supplies and not expect kids wanting to use it. I told him he's paying to replace the markers and other supplies they ruined, and he told me to go F myself and left. 
Everyone left shortly after that. I totaled up the damages, and I needed to replace about $375, and found that the kids drew on a piece I had spent the past week working on, as well as ruining a finished piece Sally did. I sent him a bill, and he blocked me. So I talked with my friend who was a lawyer and had him draft a claim for small claims court, and a letter to send my brother-in-law which I paid him for, of course. My wife is in agreement about this, but her family has been mobbing us, telling us we're being ridiculous over some markers. Only my father-in-law, who has also taken up painting recently, and my other sister-in-law say that brother-in-law has to pay. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Parents need to watch their own kids. How entitled is it to just send them to a room in someone else's house and tell them to go wild with whatever is there without even asking? I don't get all the or the a-hole and everyone sucks here. Saying you should have locked the door. How about the parents watch the children and make sure they stay with them? Though in this case, that wouldn't have helped because they felt their kids were entitled to your stuff. The way they wrecked two pieces of actual art is the worst part of all. When I was about seven or eight, I came home from school to find two other little girls, like four to five year olds, in my room, and they had ripped open all my sealed Barbie boxes my grandma gave me. When you walked into the apartment, my room was the very first room. I guess when my mom's friend came over, mom didn't even know her friend brought her kids because she just told them to go into my room and play. This was back in the day when people just walked into other people's houses. Lol. For some reason, some people seem to think everybody else has to cater to their kids. Never saw my mom's friend again though. Not the a-hole. Considering brother-in-law didn't offer an apology or paying anything for the damages and just further insulting you, I don't see a problem going after him. Parents are responsible for their kids' actions in my opinion. You know they won't pay anything otherwise. I am not sure if the never-ending drama this will cost for the rest of your lives is worth it though. Yep, brother-in-law could have apologized or at least paid half. But what did Opie get? Not a damn thing. Not even a dime. That's cold as heck, not gonna lie. Yep. I could see Opie going too far. Maybe it's not worth likely destroying the relationship for that much money, but looks like brother-in-law is the one to blame anyway. The fact he immediately blamed Opie, undervalued the markers, etc., just screams arrogance. 